Michaels, Maryland. Okay, today we are doing a really exciting little day trip. We are about to head down to St. Michael's, Maryland. And this is a town that me and my family, we've gone to for years. It's one of our favorite like local getaways. We're from Pennsylvania, so southeastern Pennsylvania. So we're like not very far from Maryland and the St. Michael's area. It's about like a two, two and a half hour drive. So it makes for a perfect little day trip. I am really looking forward to being back. Like I said, St. Michael's is a place me and my family, we love to go. We love to make at least one trip down a year. Last year due to 2020 was the first year that we missed going down and yeah, we're just, we're ready to be back. And the day that I'm filming this, this is actually, what is the date? It is Friday, June 18th. So we're heading into Father's Day weekend, which marks the St. Michael's annual antique and classic boat show. And I know that's what my dad is really looking forward to. This is why we usually always go to St. Michael's specifically over this weekend because my dad loves boating. He loves antique and classic boats. So this is usually like his Father's Day treat and the tradition that we have. So yeah, it's gonna be an awesome day. I'm excited. So we're gonna go ahead and head down. I think we're gonna pick up some food for in the car, have our little road trip, and we will be on our way. Any good road trip starts with the Wawa. We just actually were able to find a spot here for parking at the Maritime Museum, which is a huge win because usually during the weekend of the Antique and Classic Boat Show, you get a lot of people here. So we were able to get a spot, always a win. I just love the marking showing you where to go, how to get into the museum entrance. They're little crabs, how cute is that? So yeah, like I said, we are here the weekend of the antique and classic boat show, which is I know what my dad is super excited about. So I'm not sure what our plan is. We're gonna go ahead and I think get our tickets for the boat show today. And once you get your tickets, you can kind of freely go in and out of the museum. The museums um, is located literally like right next to the town, which has like the main street with all the shopping and the restaurants and everything. So I think we're gonna get our tickets and then kind of go back and forth between being in the museum and at the boat show and then going up into the town of St. Michael's. Mom, dad, are you excited? I am, I love it here. Yes, this is our little happy place close to home. Yeah, I'll explain more throughout the day kind of about St. Michael's, what there is to do here, and really the history of this town. Because if you're a history person, like I love learning different things about history. I just find it so fascinating, the different like, you know, small towns like this that are historic. There are some really interesting things that happen here within the town of St. Michael's. A lot of different historical landmarks and things to check out. So I will definitely be sure to point those out today as we go throughout the town here. Yeah, the whole town just has such a cool vibe to it. I like to always say it's kind of like the northerner Key West. <laughs> That's what I oftentimes say whenever I'm trying to like describe the town to somebody. It really does just have that vibe with all like the restaurants on the main street and the different like specialty shops and everything. And it's just a very friendly town. The other thing too, it's a dog town. Like everybody here has a dog, which we love. We absolutely love that. They actually have like certain shirts we've seen in the shops before saying like, you know, it's a dog town. It's like, that's a good place, you know what I mean?
So we just came along that pathway here and then right up here, this is the museum entrance. And you see over here, this is a popular spot, the Crab Claw Restaurant. We're already talking about where we want to eat today. There's so many favorites that we have around here for food. Alright, we're going in to get our tickets. <laughs> Alright, so we just got our wristbands here. When you buy the ticket, it's actually good for both Friday and Saturday. Both Friday and Saturday admission, which is nice. So if you're coming here for like a weekend stay, you can get in on both days. See, during the boat show here, they also always have all these different vendors set up. Which is really neat. I always love seeing the different things that they have. They have that whole tent over there with vendors. You can do some shopping. Look at these antiques. What are you doing? Like under <laughs> this is the famous St. Michael's Kitty. Oh my goodness. Edna! Mm -hmm. Hi, Edna! Yes, Edna is the cat that lives here at the Maritime Museum. If you follow their Instagram feed, she is actually quite famous. So, very excited we just saw her today. I feel like we saw a celebrity. <laughs> like I said, it's a dog town. Look, they have all these like doggy shirts they have doggy toys look at that with the crab oh my gosh the other really cool thing about this maritime museum is it is an actual working maritime museum and so as you can see here they actually restore a lot of these historic boats here on site which is so cool to see and i think they still have it like it was before you can actually go inside of like the main part of the shipyard over here and see them like currently working on whatever project they have in there yeah they also offer some really cool different apprenticeships and things for anyone who wants to come and learn the craft Come check this out. They have shaved ice. Oh my gosh. And genuine, I love how it says genuine Philly soft pretzels. There you go. And right here, this is one of the icons of St. Michael's, this famous lighthouse. What is this lighthouse called? Let's see. I don't know if it's just called the St. Michael's Lighthouse. I'm sure we'll see a sign once we get up here, but you can actually go up inside of this and they have it kind of preserved of how it originally was. Here's the name. It is Hooper Street Lighthouse. And we are going to go up inside of it right now. We're going the wrong way. Oh no, come back this way. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it's a free for all up here. Yeah, this place, this is so cool. So like I said, it is actually preserved inside of how it would have looked when it was a real working lighthouse. They didn't have that before. I'm gonna have to go over there. Okay, so now we are inside of Hooper Strait Lighthouse. And they have different things here giving you information about like what they would do for meal time and like pretty much with everything in here you can like learn about the history or was it Delaware? Is it Delaware? Oh wow. Oh that's so cool. So you can see where are we at here? Did they have the name or the number for Hooper Street here? Okay, so we're going to go upstairs on this very windy, very narrow staircase. Oh my goodness. It's a little shaky. <laughs> okay, so that goes up to the third floor. Here we are on the second floor and you can actually ring the bell, which is what my dad's doing. Can you see it down in there working? It's kind of hard to see. Well, that's this thing here. So this is the original prism for the lighthouse. Look at that. They have it back here behind glass. Oh, what's in here? Oh, wow. Is that the original one? <laughs> it's beautiful the way the re light reflects. I've never seen that in here. That no, I don't time. remember that. Okay, so we're going up now to the third level because when in Rome, right? <laughs> okay, look at this. 
<laughs> it's definitely a tight squeeze up here, but we're doing it. <laughs> Look at this. We are literally at the top where the prism is. And you get to go through. You got to duck through. We're ducking through. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, you're at the top now. <laughs> Welcome to St. Michael's, Maryland. <laughs> I got speaker up here. <laughs> Look at this, we are at the very top. Look at this, you can watch all the boats sailing in here. Okay, now to head back down. <laughs> yeah, because it's hard if you have to pass people on this thing. We're coming down now, everyone. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's definitely a tight squeeze. But worth the view, worth the view. It's worth the pictures and videos, right? <laughs> We did it! <laughs> yeah, look, you can see right there how they bring the boats in and out when they're working on them. There's one of the boats they have back there being worked on. I love this, like, smooth jazz music. <laughs> Alright, and now, here is the star of the show at the Antique and Classic Boat Show. We can start checking out these gorgeous classic antique wooden boats. These are stunning. Look at this, they got Thor here. <laughs> you can get up and get your picture on Thor. Look what I just spotted. This right here talks about Edna. And I believe this is what the kitty cat, the famous kitty cat here, has her namesake after. Look at this boat, the Perry Lee. I love the awning that it has. This is beautiful. Look at this guy coming in right here. Absolutely beautiful. Somebody on the misadventure here is turning 50. Party, party. Okay, the Maritime Museum here, it really is beautiful and there's so much to it. Like all of this is all a part of the Maritime Museum where we are at. And this is open year round and they do the different festivals like the one that we're here at right now, the Antique and Classic Boat Show. But you can also come here even when there's not a festival happening and they have all these different exhibits inside the different buildings here. It kind of tells you the history of the area of the Maritime Museum. Very interesting stuff. If you're into anything maritime history or just history in general, it's definitely something to check out. Would that be oyster? Sure. That's an oyster trap. Drag it behind it. They would drag behind the boat. Yep. There's crabs going in the pot. Oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I find it so interesting if you watch my Disney content you guys know I've mentioned before like especially whenever we're in like the seas pavilion at Epcot I do love marine life so much I love all animals and it's like you know marine life is something that whenever I'm like around it it just brings me like peace I can like stand in those pavilion like in the seas pavilion I can stand there and just like watch the fish and the sea creatures like all day it fascinates me and I always love whenever I'm like at the beach or any place like this here on the bay like looking in the water and like seeing what you can find I just like it instantly brings me peace like right here just like off this pier how you can like look down into I've been here in this area before and literally seen like crabs like right here or little barnacles or things like that it's just very peaceful just to walk around here take it all in this is really interesting so we're reading about this here in the museum and I didn't know that a male crab is called a jimmy and a female is a sook and that they are more in demand than ever before, the females. I guess, is that probably why they yeah, tell you when you're, oh, both are in demand? Maryland crabs in general. Are in demand there. But because of pollution and different things, there's less of them, and but more 
demand for them. So they're trying to bring them back. <laughs> oh, this is neat. They also have some more vendors set up inside here. Looks pretty with the string lights too. Look at that. This is cool. They usually have this here every year that you can actually learn how to make the different knots for boating. So dad just picked up his festival shirt. Very exciting. His little early Father's Day present. And we are heading down the boardwalk here to see some more boats. Oh my gosh, look at the duck. There's a duck on the pier right there. Hi, Mr. Duck. Are you like a cousin of the Disney ducks? Swim down to Florida? Eight or nine hundred miles. Yeah. Hi, Ducky. Oh my goodness. There he is. Hi, handsome. We're admiring all these beautiful, beautiful boats. And my mom just said, look at this. This literally, like you said, mom, it looks like a houseboat from like the 50s. Like it is so cute. I love the paint job on it too. Look at this. Okay, so I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is actually one of those purple martin birds. Look at him. Yeah, the purple martins, those are the ones in Disney that they actually build the houses for because they migrate from, I think it's somewhere in South America. It's very interesting. So I have to look that up if they like have a presence around here. I feel like they might because actually when we were driving in, we saw some of those um, houses, like those purple martin houses that they make. <laughs> Mr. Duck, do you know? Do you know about the purple martins? Your bird friends? Are you serious? My dad just spotted a snake. Ooh, wait, I don't see him. I don't see him. I see sticks. He went under. He went under. Yep. Oh my gosh. This is exactly what I was talking about earlier. Like, if you just stop and you just look at areas like this, you can see, like, so much wildlife. He's gone under the boat. I think he's gone under the boat. <laughs> yeah, we have to look. I think actually on this boardwalk right here, they have a sign up here that shows some of the, like, marine life that you can see right in here. Oh my gosh, is there minnows? Ooh. Oh. Swim back, little minnow. It's of course whenever I get my camera out that the wildlife swims away. <laughs> There's like some barnacles and stuff. You can see some barnacles down in there. Yes, here's the sign. How many can you see today of the species here in this Chesapeake? We saw the duck. There's some oyster shells down in there. That's a perfect segue. They have one of the um, exhibits here is oystering on the Chesapeake. See all the different oyster traps and everything that they have. Down here, this is my favorite area of the museum. This is like the interactive section where they have, yes, I think they still have it, that you can pull up the different crab traps and see if you can actually catch some crabs. This is interesting. So look, they have like, it's showing you in summer, you can catch the Maryland blue crabs there. Over this way, winter is the time for the oysters. Spring, it looks like eels. Do they have a fall? Oh yeah, over here, fall is still your Maryland blue crabs. Fish, eels, a lot of things, oysters as well. Okay, we're gonna catch a crab, let's see. Will I catch one? Well, you catch one, let's see. Right here, so catch a crab, and they have, where's the line? Do they not have it? Oh no! Oh no, I can't catch a crab today. COVID. Uh, no catching crabs. <laughs> No catching crabs because of COVID, I guess. They also though have this oyster tong gear and you can take this and go try to get some oysters. I wonder if we're allowed to still do that. Okay, we're doing it. Dad's gonna try to get some oysters. So he's sticking that down in the water. You go all the way to the bottom and you just clamp and see what you pull up. We're gonna get. Shake off the sand. You got, a rock. You got some sludge and rocks. Oh, some seaweed. Try over on the other side. All right, we're trying again. 
That's a lot of seaweed now. <laughs> Get anything? Something the seagrass. Right oh, is there something? I think, is that one in? Oh. <laughs> Where's a good spot? It's like a claw machine. It's like, where's gonna be lucky? It's hard work. It is hard work. It it's an arm workout, too. Yeah. They usually also, they have these filled up with water and have real live crabs in here. Right now, we just have a fake crab. But you see, it says right there, careful, we bite, because typically they have real crabs in here, but they don't have them for some reason. In my family, we do love to go crabbing. It is one of our favorite things to do. We're much more like crabbing people than fishing people. Crabbing has a lot of action. There's a lot of like steps involved in the process. And this is actually where we learned the first time about how, when you're crabbing, what crabs you can keep and what you can throw back. You can tell if they are male or female. Right here, you see it's showing you that the male crabs, you're looking for the Washington Monument, and the females would look like the U.S. Capitol Dome. So that's a little way that you can tell. And this is an immature female down here. That way you know, because there's certain times a year that they won't let you, it's illegal to keep female crabs um, due to them trying to, you know, repopulate and everything. Some little crab fun facts here. And another quicker way to tell their gender is that they always say with the blue crabs, the females paint their fingernails. So even though they're blue, they will have red tips on them, on their claws. So the females paint their fingernails. That's the other little thing to remember. And the males will be like all blue. So they also, typically they have this catch an eel eel trap, but they also don't have that one here right now, so we can't see if we can catch an eel. Well, as a cross on the beach, there's a courtesy of Ernest Condor. Oh my gosh, look at the bandstand. How cool is that? Yeah, we gotta go into town to see the dogs. That's true, Mom. <laughs> Mom was just saying, we remember the one year we were here, and there was actually a dog that was running down this ramp, and he would go in and swim, and then come back up. It was adorable, adorable. I mean, we actually, we were saying, we haven't seen many dogs yet. This is a dog town. Like, they literally sell merchandise saying it's a dog town. We gotta see some more doggies. This is always very interesting. They have this mystery shipwreck here. You can see a piece from it. <laughs> oh, that was a good save. Actually, these buildings right over here are part of one of the resorts. This is the inn at Perry's Cabin, and it looks beautiful. We've actually we've never stayed there before, but it's a place I would love to stay one day. It is just gorgeous. Look at it over there. That's the place that you always see all the really good reviews of around this area. I always like seeing the different names of the boats, and look at this one. It is called the Mad Alligator. It's cool. Someone's really nice yeah, for really nice. Story. That's amazing. It's a bike. It was a pandemic problem. Yeah, there you go. The air conditioned comfort of the steam boat building, which is my, the, my uh, pandemic project lasted four years now. <laughs> Well, we mentioned the Mom just said I need one of these drivers. That's like a Florida home. Like, you know how like a lot of the communities in Florida, people drive golf carts or something? I want to drive this instead of a golf cart, except I do love driving golf carts, as you all know. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so cute. Yes, I need a picture. <laughs> Look at this, it's so cute. Oh my goodness. Could you just picture me and Mickey both in it? Like going down the road? <laughs> yes, I can picture you and Mickey in there. The red, white, and blue one. Okay, so we just made it back over here. Oh, is it a butterfly garden? So look at this. This is a historic home that they have on site here. This is the Mitchell House. And we'll go inside in a second and learn some more about the history. But look, they have the whole outside area here with the gardens. Love how the like sidewalk is all the oyster shells. So here we can see the history of the Mitchell House here. Mm. 
can you see the other garden they have over here and they actually have this set up it's like what they would have grown back in this time You can see inside. Yeah, I see the chimney. So, and a table. people lived in here. Are you serious? <laughs> is there an upstairs? No, there's not. Everything oh. is just, wow. Walking through the gardens here. That was a big thing when we were reading up on the history before. Big um, crop that they exported from here in St. Michael's. Those are cool. Got the red, white, and blue. So over this way they have the Field of Dreams, which is all of the boats that are for sale. So if you have a dream of owning a boat, your dream can come true here in this field. Wait, Yahtzee, so is it like, you know we love our games. Oh yeah, it's a classic five dice game. And roll the seven seeds. But it's Yahtzee, oh that's cute. She's walking up onto this little pier. Hey girlie. Okay, so now we're actually gonna head inside of this oystering on the Chesapeake exhibit that I was showing earlier. They have these oyster fun facts, and this one's hilarious. Kids, bet you didn't know. Someone, somewhere, had to be the first person to look at a raw oyster in the face and think, that might be good to put in my mouth. <laughs> That's funny. How many gallons of water can a single oyster pump through its system in a day? Okay, put your guesses in the comments. 10, 20, or 50. Mom, what do you think? I'm going to say 50. I was thinking the same thing. Go big or go home, right? A single oyster can filter 50 to 60 gallons of water every day. Wow. Oysters were one of the first forms of marine life ever cultivated. As far as we know, who were the first to do this and when? when? I don't the, know. The, the Romans. The Romans. They can't. 110 BC. Whoa. Why is it said that Casanova ate 50 oysters every day? Why? It's an aphrodisiac, I think. Casanova may have believed that the powers of the oyster as an aphrodisiac. This is interesting. They have what the captain sees. Oh, it's not interactive. Oh, look, it's touchless now, so you can use your foot and... Oh, it's kind of hard to see in the daylight, but... It's neat. All right, mom and dad are going on the ship. Let's walk up onto the ship. Oh my gosh, I thought that was a real person. <laughs> Just like that mannequin you thought. Turn around and say, excuse me. Oh, you're not real. You're not real. Hello, sir. Look at this. You actually can go down here. If you want to brave those steps, you can go down into, that's their kitchen. Oh my gosh, that's also where they sleep. Look at those beds. We'll stick to cruising, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, there's more oyster fun facts. All right, once again, here we go. Guess how many oysters the Roman emperor ate in a single sitting? I guess, do we go big again, a thousand? Oh my gosh, yes, a thousand. This is really interesting. So look at this fact here, that the ruins of Troy oyster shells. Remember that later when we get up into the city here, when we get up here into the town of St. Michael's, they have a very similar backstory that they are built literally on oyster shells. So we kind of made a loop back around and now we're going to go inside of this building here, which has some of the exhibits. Look at these exhibits they have in here. I feel like they've updated some of these since the last time we were here. I like all the sound effects. Yeah, I like that. They made everything like touchless so that you can like do it with your foot. 
anything. It's showing. And that's the only thing it does, though. Yeah, they used to have all these different things that you could hear, like the different, different sounds. sounds. Yeah. And kids out fishing. <laughs> we'll have to say it ourselves because there was always the line that we loved. There was this one button you would hit, and it was like, what was it called? Oh, like the sounds. Oh wait, here we go. Which sound do you want? I think it's like the kid going down there. Right there, it's that one. And the kid goes, I want to catch a crab. I want to catch a crab. Gonna do it? Maybe it's like random. You get a different one. Yeah. I'm gonna see if can do that one. I don't know if it's just huh. random. Random sounds of the bay. Dogs on boats is literally my favorite thing. My dad actually at one point had a calendar that was literally called Dogs on Boats and every month it was a different picture of a dog on a boat. It's like the best thing. <laughs> Speaking of, look at this. Doggy life vest. Oh my goodness, look at the doggy. He's hanging out in the air conditioning. Hi! Oh my goodness, look at all these doggy things. They have all the little collars. Some of these are like cat size collars. We can bring one for Mickey, which he would not be a fan of. No, <laughs> we're not going to do that. We've tried to put him in collars in the past. He's not a fan. Yeah, but okay, so we are going to head now into the museum gift shop is the exit that they're using right now. And we're then going to head up into the town to walk around and I think grab some lunch soon here. Inside here is where I remember meeting Edna the kitty a couple years ago. <laughs> You're a puzzle person like me. Look, they got all your puzzles here. This is cool. They have the different flags here. You can find your initial. And it shows you. Let's see, where's my initial? Um, oh, there it is. M. Well, that's a cool one. Okay, so we just made our way here out of the Maritime Museum, and now we're actually going to go ahead and head into the town of St. Michael's. So I'm actually going to go ahead and end this vlog here and consider this part one of our St. Michael's vlog, and then be sure to go ahead, and I'm going to link right here once it is up. It should be up the very next day. I'm going to go ahead and link, so if you're watching this anytime in the future, right here, I'm going to link part two of St. Michael's where we're actually going to go ahead and explore the town. So stay tuned for that. <laughs>